Video games are cool. Video games built by players inside of other video games are cool. So what if I built an entire flight simulator in Trailmakers? Now, here, as you can see, it clearly works, but boy was it a nightmare to get it functional. This is, obviously, this is going to be uploaded on the workshop so you can mess around with it yourself. So, this video covers how I built it, what it can do, and what it can't do. So, the first thing, and the most important thing, is how do I make it look and feel to the player playing it as a flight simulator? Therefore, the most important part of any flight simulator is the displays. Um, I tried a few options, but my original plan was to create a physical flight simulator where it has a physical plane flying around on a model system, kind of like that one Tom Scott video, which I'll link in the description, because it had an because there is an analog tank simulator in the real world that works in a very similar way. So basically, the first uh, attempt at making a functional quote-unquote display for the aircraft is to use a whole bunch of servos to get it to slide along different axes. Fine in theory, floppy in practice. It seems that having zero leverage at this length results in it being pretty much useless. I tried a volumetric display next. If you don't know what those are, Google them. Very cool tech. The problem with them is that they need to be very, very high refresh rate as in, like, higher than the screen refresh rate. And physics is limited to 60 frames a second, so I can't make it go faster. Otherwise, the physics delay will delay the logic and make it break, basically. And because of that, and because there's no blurring, as you can see, even the single frame delay it takes for the sensors to activate is enough to throw off the image. This is technically a wireframe of a cube, but because there is a one frame delay on the LEDs and where the LEDs are, it's incomprehensible and can only be barely assumed to be a cube. So I came up with my final design it's using the concept with the servos, but instead having the servos be on zero power and just act as a linkage to the main system, which is instead powered by thrusters. This sets all the things that move the unit in the actual unit, which is not what I want. I would have preferably wanted all the movement things built into the base of it. But seeing as how that's not an option, this is what I had to choose. So for the first inter iteration, just basic tests. Um, this one only had lateral movement. That is to say side to side and forwards and backwards. Up and down was not implemented yet, and that would be vertical movement. Top speed was limited by drag, and the most important bit and the criti most critical bit to this entire system is the pitch logic, where it uses one accumulator going from 1 to negative 1 for the up and down quote unquote velocities, and one accumulator going forwards from 0 to 1 as the gate for uh, remembering the forwards velocity. And then using some logic, I could tell whether I should be adding or subtracting to the forwards velocity. And actually using this logic, I can, by modifying these values here, I can tune things like how the aircraft feels. For example, using this, I can simulate both the gravity of the aircraft as well as roughly the thrust to weight of the aircraft. Just small details that change how it functions when it's both pitching up and pitching down. Flight Simulator 2, this one just has the angle visualized and just other small things. Flight Simulator 3, um, again, most of these versions are very, have only very slight changes from each other. This one is neutrally buoyant and it has piston-based altitude control um, and it has enough weight to warrant having a separate stabilizer gyro built into it. Flight simulators 4 to 5, again, very similar things. It did have slide control now because there was quote-unquote turbulence with the linkage, sometimes binding up, and causing the aircraft to be yanked from side to side. This no longer happens nearly as much by using speed sensors and thrusters as a side-to-side -side control as opposed to aerodynamics. 
Flight Simulator 6 to 7. Um, thrusters, lift, you know, swapped out the uh, buoyancy from the, um, I don't know, the airbags, balloons, that's what they're called, balloons, uh, to thrusters to keep it smaller. Less stable as a result, but, you know, it is what it is. It's smaller, and I decided that's more important in this case. Here, I decided to test two potential versions of having it dogfight compatible, because the main issue with having it be in a dogfight is that it would need to be able to go through other aircraft. So I can't have two of these next to each other because the linkages end up winding around each other and binding the planes up. So my option was to either one, offset the plane, or two, make the linkages be able to pass through each other. Sadly, both of these failed, both of them for the same reason, the lack of rigidity and annoyingness because it just would not work. So, sadly, I just had to stay as a normal flight simulator. You can still fight with it as long as you don't quote-unquote dogfight because you can't go in loops around each other. You have to be out of range of the other aircraft to duel it, which makes the actual fighting with it very unfun. But it can hit ground targets, so it is decent enough at doing practice like that. So if you want, place a couple trees, like tiny model trees or tiny model vehicles on the ground and go at it. Flight Simulator 8, that's when I actually finally added the gun. And I also added sensors at the bottom here that link to this tone generator to give it uh, an altitude warning when it's both too low and too high, since those are both important things to know when if you're trying to dodge, since it does have a minimum height that it can go to and a maximum height to go to. And past that, Flight Simulator 9 is the final one, and that's really it. As you can see, I just made it clear, packed away the logic, and that's the core of it done. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it feels fine. It flies pretty good. It has a limited space it can fly in, but it takes a few seconds to go from one edge to the other, which is honestly more than I had hoped for. It's not particularly amazing, and it only has an F-16 in it, and even then the F-16 doesn't exactly have complex um, de details added to it, such as the thrust to weight and whatnot, which I did consider adding, but frankly, as I was running out of time to make this video, I just didn't see a point in adding details like that unless there was going to be dogfighting. And since I can't get it to dogfight without getting binded up with another version and being unable to do it, it just didn't seem worth the effort to program in different versions and different models of aircraft. For example, MiG-21, A-10 Warthog, and the Su-27, all of which I had, or all of which I had originally planned to add ended up not adding due to the technical difficulties, uh, running out of time, and it pretty much being pointless since you can't actually feel the difference unless you're dogfighting another player. So yeah, this is going to be uploaded to the workshop. Feel free to mess around with it. Feel free to make your own versions and maybe even improve it. And that's about it. Thank you and goodbye. Um, Next video, I think I'm probably going to make a logic-based game. Not like a flight simulator flight simulator, but more of a deep space combat simulator guiding missiles into target, having to deal with acceleration. Mostly because I feel like that would be a pretty interesting project. And also, I think it would actually be surprisingly simple. Well, goodbye.